We're doing a breakdown of the ankle lock attempt from Mikey Musumeki against Juni. And he didn't get the submission in this attempt, but it is something I really wanted to take a look at because Mikey as a rooster or light featherweight has been able to submit a lot of people with straight ankle locks in the gi. And I want to see how he's translating this to no gi. And it's really interesting because when you, if I took, took myself back to maybe five years ago, I, I'd kind of conceded that I don't think anyone at that lighter weight division, and those lighter weight divisions would actually tap to a straight ankle lock. I kind of thought that was, they just, for some reason in the higher levels, people were almost just accepting an injury to, to keep going. And then of recent, the last few years, you're starting to see people tap again. So to me, that tells me something's changed in the mechanics that's going on. And you get to see a really interesting angle that Mikey Musumeki is using where he's actually going side on to the leg instead of front on with his straight ankle. So it starts out with Juni having the Z-lock position and he actually got a really good angle on this. He was doing a really good job. He even from that passed the leg across the other side and started to try to dig for Mikey's heel, which Mikey managed to, to hide his heel against. In the meantime, Mikey had managed to free his leg and start attacking what I'd say is a relatively normal straight ankle lock, right? Uh, but what you see is a bit later, he starts to attack from side on, okay? So from here, Mikey manages to eventually pummel his foot in. He starts trying to step onto the hip, which obviously I can bridge off the hip to try to finish the straight ankle. And Juni has pushed the foot inside, okay? The leg's gone inside. And it's around this time that Mikey starts changing to attacking the side of the foot, like a, a, a sideways ankle lock. And to me, this makes a lot of sense. Anatomically, that is, because I always thought it was weird that when we're doing straight ankle locks, we're trying to like fully just dorsal, uh, sorry, plantar flex the, the foot, pushing down like this, which actually puts pressure on the anterior capsule of the joint. But you can actually fight that reasonably well uh, with musculature and you can do some damage, but it's not necessarily the weakest point of the ankle. Our ankles are a lot weaker by this, in this inversion action, okay? Pulling our foot this way, which attacks the outside of the leg, the anterior talofibular ligament, all right? So this is the most common ligament you'll injure when you, for example, you roll your ankle. It's, the, it's a weak part of the ankle. And it makes sense that if you're attacking the ankle that you're taking it more side on, taking it more this way than down this way. So Mikey's initial attack was pretty much for the straight ankle. You'll notice he's, he's getting his elbow nice and deep as he, as he goes and he's trying to poke his hand through. But as he gets to this point where, where this foot starts to come in, he starts to change strategy to start to attack this sideways ankle lock. He starts pulling, instead of turning the knee out so it goes straight, he starts pulling the leg across this way. So he's now side on. You can see now the foot the knee is kind of side on to me and the foot's also side on. You'll see a still in the match where the foot's actually, you can see the toe sitting here as opposed to being caught up in the armpit like this. So he gets that elbow deep and he starts pulling this across and he shoots his hips deeper, okay? This allows, he, he wants to get the bridge to come right, when he bridges his hips, it comes right through the ankle and it's a little hard to do with the hips so far away. He shoots his hips deep and then he looks to reap. Okay, the reap gets him a really good side on ankle to the, uh, angle to the ankle, okay? So once he starts taking this across, this is where he really starts feeling like he can put pressure on. As we're reap, we're gonna actually like, not just go like this, but try to stretch the knee across, which you can see kind of like brings the, the leg more side onto me. And then the bridge can come in after that. So with the, with the elbow deep, hands coming high, pulling across and then reaping. Mikey starts to connect his hands together here too. And you can see here, I'm like, if I was to bridge, I'm gonna bridge up this way and get this side on pressure to the leg. And it's, it's actually really powerful. I feel like by just kind of stomping down with my, my leg, my hips come up and this puts a lot of pressure on the ankle. Quite different. In fact, I feel like if, if Jacob was able to square back up and get his knee facing me again, so like, so I'm now facing in line with the leg, I actually feel like I'd require quite a lot of pressure to finish. But when this reap's actually turned it and he can hip in through that, there's a lot of power bridging through. You see, I'm just like kicking this leg and it's coming through with my hips onto the leg, okay? I believe he even triangles his legs 
he might do it one stage, I think his foot might be on the outside, but he can start to like hip in like this, okay? So he's got his hand high, he's scooted the hips in, he's turned the leg nice and sideways. He reaps across, connects his hands, and maintains this sideways angle on the, on the leg as he's bridging as Juni rolls through. So you can essentially follow and apply this same lateral pressure to the ankle. Obviously the submission didn't end up getting the finish, so it is hard to tell how much of that was Mikey trying to force that angle or how much he was just following the direction that Juni happened to, to turn in that exchange. But the key things that I took away from that were getting the, the elbow very deep and the, the hands nice and high, scooting the hips in nice and close so you're right underneath, turning the knee side on so that you can actually get good pressure on the side of the ankle. And lastly, the reap, stretching the knee across and bridging the hips up. So here we can see Juni has the Z-lock position and Mikey's starting to free this leg and he's gonna grip Juni's leg and attack somewhat of a regular straight ankle lock, okay? And he'll attack this, this regular style of straight ankle lock for a little bit first. So just looking at this, if we just stop here, you'll see, look at the toes, they're pointing pretty much right underneath the armpit, the leg is straight. From here, he's gonna attack this for a little while. Even here, he seems to be turning a little side onto the, to the ankle, but he'll kind of move back and forth between what at the moment looks quite front on. And Juni's gonna pass that leg across. Mikey will look to step on the hip and Juni will actually push that foot off the hip. This will happen in a moment. So here, Mikey's looked to step. Oh wait, not yet, he's going for the, uh, Juni went for the heel hook first. This is where Mikey looks to step on the, the hip and Juni pushes that off. And you can actually see here that this grip Mikey's using is turning the knee inwards now. It's pulling and getting that leg side on, all right? So Mikey can't step on the hip because of this arm blocking. So he's gonna go underneath here and put his foot, he's actually trying to pummel uh, Juni's leg out here, which is which he's managed to stick in. So he kind of clears that out, that, that leg's gone now from the bridge. And you'll see now the foot is side on. So there's a big difference here where the toes are now facing what is essentially towards the camera as opposed to being pointed up towards the armpit. So the foot is side on, all right? If you look back at the, at the arm grip, so you can see he's gonna be using his arm to try and get that that leg a little bit side on. Okay, here we are. So he's now definitely got that side on angle. He's brought his hips in. You can see the bridge is kind of forwards here. And then he'll kind of drag the knee out as he reaches across, which will start to put good pressure on. So he drags the knee out and there we are. Reaps across and he's now got good bridging pressure. Again, look at the, the shape of the foot, that's side on, putting pressure on that lateral ligament of the ankle, okay. Uh, so they kind of, he kind of keeps this grip and keeps applying that pressure and they roll out of bounds. Um, I do feel like it's maybe a little harder to get as much pressure into your straight ankle locks in, in Nogi. Maybe that's why um, Juni was able to, to defend that, but they ran out of bounds and he didn't finish, but that was a really interesting look at, the, at a slightly different variant of the straight ankle lock.